Yep. Hey y'all, today we're out, we're gonna do some different kind of motorsports. Now I raced cars for about 10 years and loved it, but you know, four kids, kids are getting older, it's a lot of time and effort to maintain the cars and get them ready for the next race. So, sold the race cars, uh, but got into off-roading a little bit because it's lightweight. I mean, it's easy, you come up, you have fun for the day, uh, and then you you know you head back and hopefully nothing breaks. I got the Toyota back here. Well, it's a Lexus, but it's a Toyota platform. Very capable off-road car. You see these, I think it's called the Prado 110 chassis, and you see a lot of overlanding videos. But today we're gonna show you an off-roading video, not like little dirt roads. We're gonna see what this thing can do. We're gonna push it a little bit. We're gonna try and get it stuck. I wanna show you all a little bit just how capable this vehicle is off-road. Now this one's pretty simple. I've got some all-terrain Falcon tires on it. Uh, 33 inch tires about. I've got a three inch lift up front, two and a half in the back with the Eibach. You can see we got the car buried down pretty good in this hole. And we're just gonna see how it, got some pretty good tuck. Okay. My daughter just fell out of the vehicle there. No, I think you're getting everything out of your suspension right now. Yeah, I think we got her maxed out. The back tire's up Honestly. about, we're about six inches up in the air here. Got it rocking pretty good. So here, Landon. Let's see if it'll Did pull. Did I come loose on this at all? Or was I on? You you looked like you were on the highway. <laughs> all right, it's right here. Stand right here and let's see if we can get it to pull up out of this. I think you have maxed out your suspension. Do you want me to stand on that one for you? <laughs> left, left. There you go. There you go. Hey, you're gonna have to take that trailer hitch off. I mean, it was like it was like nothing. No, I know. But I, I felt a little bit of traction if you, grabbing. If you well, what happens when that hit? The, the tires are having to do a little extra work. Yeah. I, I mean, you're not gonna haul. Anything Still bottoming out. It's not nearly like I wouldn't have made it through that with the. Oh, um, no. Before you'd... I had the lift, I would have been dragging you'd too have... hard. <laughs> yeah. No, it's good. It's, it's capable. Good. It's capable. Let's do it. All right. All right. So, are you still rolling? Yeah. All right. So, we've got, zoom in here and show the Eibach. So, we did Eibach. Now, it's interesting. A lot of people on the forums don't know about Eibach suspension and they think it's bad. I. It's funny because I'm a, I come from the car community and we've been using Eibach suspensions and lowering and racing for years and years and years, decades and decades, right? It's They're a great suspension company. So I don't know if that's just a Lexus thing that people haven't heard of Eibach or if maybe they aren't as known in the um, lifting side of things. But on the lowering side, we've been using them to race cars. I mean, I've been racing with Eibach suspensions for 40 years. Great, It's it rides really good, very smooth. Um, no complaints on the highway, it doesn't lean too bad. And I think it's a nice setup. It was the cheapest setup that I could get to do the basic lift and good name brand, so I just went with it. And then we've got Falcon All Terrains. Actually, my buddy Eric is the one that recommended these to me. I wanted an all terrain, but I didn't want anything too loud. And so these have been really good because on the highway, they're really quiet. Some 15 inch, I think, wheels. Um, went a little bit wider. I got a little bit of poke there, not much. I didn't want to be slinging mud all over the car driving down the highway, but I just wanted a little bit of poke. And that turned out really good. And you know, things I'm thinking about doing to the car, front and rear bumpers, might do a winch, might do front and rear differential lockers. Not sure, you know, I just getting into this. Yeah, testing out the suspension. So if I would have done the extended kit. I still don't think you'd be reaching, would you? No, I don't think it was much. It might, about what, another couple inches? Yeah, it wasn't six or whatever that it needs. <laughs> That's almost a foot. Yeah. But doing pretty good. No rubbing in the back. I've never had issues with the back rubbing. I mean, it's you can see we're tucked in there pretty good. The front out on the trail today did rub just a little bit. Now down here, I had them cut this right here because this um, body mount comes out like that. So they cut it, weld on a plate, and just hit it with some spray paint because it would rub really bad right here. And you can see I did some trimming here. Uh, fender liners are gone. Had to do some trimming. On this side here. Did you hammer in those pinch welds or really like that? Yeah, the pinch welds got hammered in also. Overall. Just need better bumpers. Some control arms. So 230,000 miles on it, it's still going good. Still going good. <laughs> 
So the way the Lexus four-wheel drive system works, it, it does have a center differential lock. And my understanding is there's a sensor on each wheel. And when it senses a wheel slipping, it applies brakes to the wheel that is slipping. And so all that power that would have been going to the tire that's up in the air or that doesn't have any traction, it gets held in place. Testing this ground clearance. It gets held in place and that allows the power to be redirected to the tire that is on the ground. And it works really well. I mean, you can definitely feel it clawing and, and grabbing a little bit. And look guys, I'm not trying to say this is as good as having a front and rear locker. I'm definitely looking at doing front and rear lockers. If I get into this more and it's something that we end up doing and I feel like I need it for a little more capability, then yeah, I'm gonna do the lockers. But the limitations of this vehicle so far have not been with the four wheel drive system or with traction. The limitations have been ground clearance, right? And so at a 33 inch tire, that's about as big as you can get without going really crazy with kind of turnkey suspensions, you know, without going with a full custom setup or, or doing something um, a lot bigger. And I don't know that I want to do that just yet. So, you know, I would say right now, probably happy with the setup. I do think a winch is gonna be appropriate, a bump, bumpers and winch, so that when I get stuck, I can pull myself out. That would also allow me to do some of this alone, you know, without having to have another car. Of course, it's always more fun to have your buddies out here, but just a little more freedom to get out when I wanted to and not be worried about being stuck. But the Lexus, this is, I think, the Prado 110 platform or something. It shares the, the Land Cruiser. And it's interesting, the vehicle is getting a, um, I mean, these are pretty big ruts that were going down this hill. The vehicle is getting a good aftermarket following now with the overlanding community. Not as much with off-roading as, you know, like what we're doing here today is a little more hardcore. A oh, oh, little bit of rubbing there, maxing that suspension out. Uh, Woo-wee, I don't know about this. Oh, we got it. We're crab walking a little bit here. That back tire is probably about a foot in the ground air right now. Crab walking it down a little bit. Um, but they're they're very well maintained vehicles by a lot of people. Oh, look at all his lights on. That looks so sick. And um, and they're very capable. These were designed as off road vehicles. Again, sharing a lot of parts with the Land Cruiser, which is a very well known off road vehicle. And it's just they've never been used this way, right? Most people just drive them on the street. So we just came down this hill and we were talking about the suspension flexing and how it was doing great. Now let's see if we can make it back up. It's unfortunate because video does not show the steepness, right? It doesn't show just how steep this is. Um, right down here, not too bad, but as we get up, you can see my buddy there, his Jeep is flexing. So just so you know what we're out here riding with, he has 37 inch tires. I don't know, three or four inch lift, five inch lift. He's got a huge lift, front and rear locker, center locker, everything can lock, um, winch, bumpers. I mean, he has a very, very capable rig. And you can see he's stretching his suspension out. Let's see how we can do, if we can get up through this. Again, I think our limitation is gonna be ground clearance, not traction. You hear that, that four wheel drive system kicking in you'll feel a tire start to slip and then it'll it'll just stop slipping magically it's pretty cool and i think there you go you hear that i think what's happening is it's it's applying brake to the tire that's slipping which redirects power to the other wheel and i mean it's it's working really really well i'm impressed um the three inches of lift two and a half or three inches whatever we did You'll have to look up the Eibach suspension online, but it made a huge difference because I don't think we could have made it through this before. I did offer this vehicle a little bit previously and I don't think we would have made it up this simply because the, um, ooh, it's kicking and clawing. The um, trailer hitch drags, you know, you start dragging the differential and as soon as you bottom out, you've basically dropped an anchor. I mean, it doesn't really matter how much traction you have. When you bottomed out, you're done. But man, this thing is just pulling up through this. Like I I would say we're at 60 or 70% of the vehicle's capacity right now. Pretty impressive. It's not struggling coming up this hill. And this is a pretty serious grade that we're climbing in deep ruts. No issues. Now, it's tough because 
<clears throat> off-roading, you think you're at 60 or 70 percent and you seem to go from that straight to stuck pretty fast. But at least so far, no issues. We've got a pretty steep little ledge right here. Let's see how we do. Climbing this. Yeah. I mean, really, guys, nothing. No, no sweat off my back yet. The lift was huge for ground clearance. Without that, I do not think we'd be coming up through this. I think we would have been stuck. Dragging the mountain down the hill. On left, on left. Oh. Holy. There she is. You like how when he says hard left, my initial reaction is hit the gas. <laughs> Go on in. Nothing a heavy right foot can't get through. You know right? I'm I'm fortunate I've got really good factory skid plates. So we've been looking for somewhere that we could actually get the Lexus stuck. And I think we might've found it. So we're gonna go up this, now this is pretty deep. I think this area right through here is not gonna be too big of a deal, but I don't have the ground clearance to go straight like he just did. So we're gonna go over here. This is the plan at least. And the concern is this is really steep right here. I think we're gonna slide over and get pushed into that tree, which is what some other people have obviously had done. So we're gonna go ahead and give it a shot though and see what we get. <laughs> hey, Landon, step way back, okay? He gets blind when he gets up there. That's why he got a little nervous last time. He went into full send mode. Don't worry, Murphy will stay out of the way. He's a smart dog. You're good. What? Now it's broken. That sounds yep. like a rear. Don't worry, Murphy will stay out of the way. You're 
good. So here's the obligatory sad video after being all happy about doing great all day. Uh, something broke. Then is very, very much broken in the back of the Lexus. Now in its defense, it did pull up through that twice. It pulled up through that twice. But um, yeah, when I try to drive in the back end, it just goes clunk, 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 and there's no movement. And the Jeep, for the second time, the front, um, locker is permanently locked it will not unlock so we have came up with two vehicles and we're going home with zero vehicles and we're gonna need two flatbeds out of here we're just gonna hook up a strap he's gonna tow me out I'll throw it in neutral roll it out of here get it back up to the front find some people that have tools I'll show you this hill that fit it I did this twice and I mean the camera it's it's a lot deeper I can trust you trust me a lot deeper than it looks also took on you also blew a feet here also took on look at the mud jammed up in there some uh, some little dent action here <laughs> Dude, this close to losing air in that time. lost a little Probably dent action up top point, and we took some hits and what do you say we got a flat we're going flat up front no i don't think you're going flat but you see where the beat oh came. you came real close to that coming on from the dirt getting yeah. in there yeah it held it held barely Good thing I only aired down to 20 instead of 15. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna get it. We're gonna get it out of here. Yeah, it's it's painful sounding pulling this thing out of here, uh, but you know we'll get it out. We'll get it sorted out. We'll probably end up doing a locker in the back since we're gonna get into the rear end and sort this out anyway. Eventually, these gears will strip out completely and actually won't sound as bad being pulled out here. But so far, no issues. My buddies, uh, you know, we got me hooked up here to the strap, pulling me out. Oh, we'll get it on a trailer, trailer to my house, let it sit and think about what I want to do the vehicle long term. You know, do I want to keep it? Do I want to go crazy with it? Um, just do a locker in the back and get things sorted back out so we can drive it again. Yeah, I'm just going to take maybe a week or two. We're going out of town anyway and sort that out. Um, so, yeah, bummer. But, you know, this is motorsports. The downside here is that. Oh, see if he can pull me up out of this hole. The downside here is that no problems, no problems. You know, I'm used to cars and stuff breaking, uh, but normally I'm racing cars and I've got my trailer and I got my tools. And when stuff breaks, you throw the car back on the trailer and you go home. You know, today for some reason I didn't trailer this up, kind of new to off roading and just getting into this, but definitely should have. Lesson learned. Uh, probably also shouldn't have sent it up that cliff at full sin but you know i don't know I, I think i would do that again all things told hope you guys like this video in summary all of the video i wanted to tell you how capable the lexus gx470 is how awesome it is off-road and it is as long as you're not really stupid with it which i think is the category that i fell into and then it broke so you know lesson learned very capable vehicle i would not hesitate to take it off-road and play around with Jeep clubs, but when you see something that your brain just kind of says, I don't know if that one's for me, maybe listen, maybe listen, unlike me. All right, thanks guys, hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, <laughs> I'll, I'll catch up with you next time.